Today's episode of The Read Pile is brought to you by Audible.com. Get a free audiobook download and a 30-day free trial at www.audibletrial.com slash nerdupmedia. Over 150,000 titles to choose from for your iPhone, Android, Kindle, or MP3 player. I'm Elle, and I already forgot my resolution about attack lines. And I am the Sussman Rick Sussman, this week featuring this swank WWE authentic tough enough hat. Yeah. Mm. Pretty awesome to be me. Yeah. Mm. yeah. And you are watching The Read Pile. It's the week of January 6th, and here's some comic book news you can use. Real quick. Yes. Spoilers. Not super spoilers, because if you're watching the Flash TV show, you're already aware of this. If you read any of the internets, you already know it. But spoilers, we pause for spoilers, let people skip ahead to the next chapter if they so desire. Okay. Oh my god, King Shark! Oh! 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 Okay, uh, okay, okay. On Flash, they teased it and they, they, they've they already showed image. Did you see King Shark? Did yes. you see yes. King did you see him with his big okay. fin? The big no, fin? No, I saw a still. Yeah. Now I want to see the actual action. I think that's going to say a lot more. Okay. I've only seen I the know, stills. I'm I haven't watched the too. episode because I'm trying to watch them in... I, I'm know, waiting for the season. Mind. I'm trying to watch the season and then I watch a see. It's like reading a whole graphic novel. You either read the single issues or you read the graphic novel. I'm a graphic novel kind of guy when it comes to the TV stuff. Oh my god, King Shark. He's so big. You see how big he is? Now, here's my question, though. Yes. Okay, here's here's the debate. The debate segment of the show. If we can have King Shark on television, why couldn't we have him in the Suicide Squad movie? Because the Suicide Squad... Basically, they went to Comic-Con, and they found, like, a few years ago, some really bad cosplay of all these characters. And they're like, hey, you guys want me to be in a movie? <laughs> well, hang on well, now. You can't be in a movie. Diablo, we need, we need big-time actors, but we're going to take your costumes. Diablo is like spot on, and so is Katana. Although I, I have trouble it's arguing. Not hard. No. If, no, I'm serious. If you go back in time, okay, before the mention of the movie, mm. and that oh yeah, so and so is gonna be Harley Quinn, and you and you went to Comic Con and you said, hey, how do you like this costume? Somebody, most people would roll their eyes and say that's crap. So you're saying the reason why? But now that it's in, and now you got all these. Uh, hold on, these let me, tweens let me, dressing wait, wait, up as wait. Harley. I, I just want to make sure I understand this. The reason why... Now it's cool. The re now it's an accepted costume. <laughs> the reason it's why... There. You can't take it away. The reason why King Shark is only on TV... Okay, thank you. Thank you for taking me out of this. Is because of cosplayers? No, no. Yeah, no. I'm sorry, I just I kind of went off. <laughs> so you freely admit that none of this made any sense. Are you excited for King Shark? Yes. Do you think he looks great? Yes. Does he look like the comic book come to life? Not so much like an animated feature, but an actual, like, if there was such a thing as a human-shark hybrid, this is what it would look like? That's what I've always imagined. <laughs> yes, I have imagined it. So many questions. <laughs> Let's go review books. Time for comic book reviews. I'm going to start with something that was completely out of my norm, but I want to try it. It was number one, and I was thinking, hey, maybe this is like a jumping on point. A-Force. I don't think it was a jumping on point, because I was completely lost. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that there is a huge story of something that had happened that I don't know about because I'm reading this and I will just say I'll just go ahead and say it so Singularity is stuck out in space and she wakes up and she's like oh man I miss all my friends and her friends don't remember her and we're talking about like She-Hulk and Captain Marvel and I can't remember the other girl's name or that other girl's name too but it just I think because I just 
I'm, I'm, just, I'm too lost. There's too many questions. And even if this is a jumping on point, maybe there wasn't a story. Maybe I don't know enough. I did, I did absolutely no research. I just wanted to dive in. I just want to dive in with issue one and see if it just captured my my interest. And if it did, then yeah, I'll totally go back and I'll read more. I'll read backstories and, and catch up if these characters really just grab my attention. But just, I was so lost that, I don't know, I guess maybe the characters didn't grab my attention even with the mis all the mystery going on. So unfortunately, this will not be on my read pile. <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> Angry Birds! Yes, it's a kid's book! It's an obvious kid's book! But I've read kid's books before and they were kind of entertaining. <laughs> Just really out there entertaining. And this is cute. I think it's perfect for a kid. It's not something I think I could probably continue reading because it's so diluted in a storyline that it's perfect for a child. It's very cutesy, and it takes all the characters, it takes all the little different birds and pigs and everything, they all have names, and I find that part really adorable. It's not that this book is bad, it's just not for me. It's not for my age range, <laughs> I believe. <laughs> and I, I mean, it's, I, I feel bad saying that I, I don't want to continue reading it because there are other ones that were out of my age range that I read and I, was, I kept reading. But I think this is too childish for me. Um, I definitely, if you have small children, though, it, you know, if they're able to read and they want to just try something on their read pile, that's this is something that you could try. It's not. It's very cute, friendly, uplifting, lovely little stories. I did not see any violence. You know, it's. It's cute. It's a little cartoon that they can read. So, if you get a small kid, thumbs up to you. You should try it. I'm not going to. <laughs> but, but, I pick of the week. <laughs> ba -ba! Paper Girls! Alright, so. Explain to me again why Plutona wasn't good, but a group of people and a coming of age <laughs> story and a girl. <sighs> I, I'm in just, I'm in love just with this story about these girls and just running around and all this stuff is going down and around them in the world and like aliens are just coming to earth, crazy stuff going on, people are disappearing. And then last issue, well, maybe it's technically the issue before that, the stepmother that, you know, they were just wrestling with the gun. Well, last issue we found out Somebody got shot. <laughs> so we're dealing that with that this issue. And what happens to her? Ah! We don't know. I mean you kind of you, you see what happens to her, but you don't know what happened to her. <laughs> it's just more mystery. But these are good mysteries. These are the mysteries that you are finding out little things and you find out enough that wants to keep you reading. I think it's nuts. I think it's it's that crazy 80s movie sci-fi-ish nutso TV series thing going on and I love it and I just want to be all about it and I'm going to keep reading. <laughs> and in the meantime, we will see what Rick has to say. I still contend that Plutona and Paper Girls is quintessentially the same book and the fact that no! The fact that no. you... Jeff Lemire is a hell of a writer. He, so is Brian Vaughn. Anyway. The hat is backwards. I am scoped in for reviews. I am wearing my Magneto is Right shirt. I have a new number one as well. I have two new number ones, both from Marvel. It is a Marvel heavy, heavy week here on the Read Pile, which doesn't normally happen. Let's begin. Uncanny X-Men number one. Colin Bunn and Greg Land have teamed up to make... A book that can be described in one word. Sad. Just because a story is sad does not make it a bad story. In fact, sad stories can be amazing. Shawshank Redemption is a sad story, but it's amazing. In Uncanny X-Men, you have Sabretooth, you have Psylocke, you have a 
for whatever reason, mind-wiped Archangel, which I don't know why he's mind-wiped, but he's mind-wiped. And Magneto, of course. My favorite villainous superhero is Magneto. I, I, my favorite anti-hero is probably the Punisher, but when I found out Magneto was like one of three probably Jew superheroes, the Jewish superheroes being probably Magneto, even though it's never 100%, he might just be a gypsy, they never really say it one way or the other. He was in a concentration camp, we know that. Uh, Moon Knight and Kitty Pride. They're your Jewish superheroes, I've named all of them. And Moon Knight, depending on which incarnation, isn't even Jewish, whatever. I love Magneto, so whenever I get a story featuring Magneto and what is essentially the Wolverine's book that I was reading, uh, even though I gave up on it because it was a weekly, it wasn't bad, it was just costing me a lot of money, I gravitated to this book. I was like, wow, I can't wait to read this. Oh my god, it's sad. It, it's just, it's painful. It's difficult to read because it's just, this happens, and man, that's a kick in the nuts, and then this happens, and that's a punch in the teeth, and then this happens, and oh, back to the nuts again. Listen, it's not a bad book by any stretch of the imagination. In fact, it's very, very good, but oh, man, it's brutal, um, and it's not brutal in, in the way that I expected it to be. Like, if I pick up a Garth Ennis book or a Warren Ellis or something, I, I expect it to be, like, really heavy and, and punching me left and right. I was hoping for a little bit more lighter fare. And even though I didn't, and, and I didn't get it, I just, I didn't get it. I still very much enjoyed the book, but man, that was a tough read. Very good, though. Just want to make sure you understand. Now, let's move on to something that I completely expected. You see what I did there? Spider-Man and Deadpool. Number one. Spider-Man Deadpool, the team-up I have personally been waiting for for some time now. This is awesome, should be up here now. We have Joe Kelly and Ed McGinnis who are coming back together from the original 1994 Deadpool run, of which I have many comics, and I'm hopefully going to complete my collection someday. Um, I loved this. This was fabulous, except for one small problem. It's not the writer's fault, it's Marvel's fault. And I'm calling Marvel out on this. I very much enjoy this book, but if you look at the bottom left-hand corner of the screen that has the image, all this, you'll see, plus a special bonus book, Vision Number 1, included. Why? Why do I need a whole other comic in this book? Do you see how thick this is? I'm getting two comics for $3.99. I should be over the moon. I don't give a damn about Vision number one. If I wanted Vision number one, hey L, if I want Vision number one, what could I do? No, she's not there anymore. She would say go buy Vision number one. I don't understand why Marvel like shoehorned that in with this book. I don't care about Vision. Give me more Spider-Man and Deadpool. That's all... Just take a minute, because it's time for to spin up the graphic, because it's time once again to pick a pick of the week that's already been picked as a pick of the week, but I don't care because I love this book. Midnighter! Yes! Oh my god. Oh. Midnighter versus Spiral now. Ah, maybe we'll see another Midnighter Grayson team up. I can almost hear L stomping back up the stairs now to tell me I'm wrong. It'll never happen, but whatever. Midnighter is the kind of book in which a character by the name of, uh, what was his name, like, Bavada, uh, Ivada Animal. Do you remember the guy in Batman Brave and the Bold that wore the loincloth and had the one little tooth sticking out and he would combine random animals together? Yeah, that guy. Yeah, he's back in this book. Steve Orlando has created, a, a recreated, or brought back, whatever you want to call it, a character that I adore. And he's making Midnighter even better. And, and the punching and the brains and the, oh, are you reading Midnighter? Tell me why you're not, because you're wrong. Whatever your reasoning is, you're wrong. And when you get to a point where you don't even review a book anymore, I've said this on a couple episodes, where the review of my book is basically, ha, ha, ja, 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 that's your pick of the week, dude. I guarantee it. For you, our loyal followers of The Read Pile, we have an awesome offer from Audible.com. Audible is offering a free audiobook download with a free 30-day trial to give you the opportunity to check out their awesome service. You can download some really great books like The Hobbit, the unabridged version from Tolkien. You can download Divergent, Lean In, lots of great stuff to check out. To download your free audiobook today, go to audibletrial.com slash nerdupmedia. Again, that's audibletrial.com slash nerdupmedia for your free audiobook. That's this week for the Read Pile. Rick? Okay, anyway, wanted to give a 
big shout out to uh, PurpleSwordfish.com. Uh, game reviews, fun stuffs, let's plays, but more importantly, because it involves me, and, and by, me, by me, I mean us, um, <laughs> our friends, our friend at PurpleSwordfish.com does a lot to try, and I don't know if he wants me to say his, his name, because we're also Facebook friends, and you know, I don't want to intermingle that. Anyway, he does a lot to promote us and other members of NerdUp Media, though he is not a member of NerdUp Media, he is a fan of us, and... Specifically, he's the one who's been uh, leaving a number of uh, messages on our shows and telling us, hey, you guys are doing great, and he promotes us, and I feel it is time for us to do the same. And even though I do not have the magic capability that Jesse used to of making a graphic that says purplesswordfish.com, uh, well, you could just go to purplesswordfish, all one word, dot com, and visit with our friend, and that would make us happy. And if you make the TARDIS happy, then all is well with the world. Right, TARDIS? Just don't look into the TARDIS. Oh, don't look into the heart. But if to say you had a heart, that means you have a soul? Now I'm so confused. Yeah. See you guys. <laughs> <laughs> In these conditions. <laughs> he didn't lock the other one. Now it's the middle, it's the top leg, the one you open for no reason. For no reason? No reason! Yeah, well, you look ridiculous in a hat 